What is feminism? How does one deal with it? I want to try a new format. I want to talk about what is feminism. As a young man, you're going to have to deal with this and navigate this. I'm going to leave various links in the description box below. So I'm going to give a little history lesson first. Before feminism, there were the suffragettes, which were a group of women that advocated for the right for women to vote. They achieved this in 1920 with the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Before that, some states had previously given women the right to vote. In the 1920s, the Roaring Twenties were a time of fun. It was also a time of prohibition. The new women, some, which some women were called flappers, began to challenge the social norm of a woman being primarily the wife and child. However, most women still fulfilled this role. The 1930s brought the Great Depression. The New Deal tried to fight the effects of the Great Depression, mainly high in un unemployment. Any progress on women's employment outside the home was sidelined because men needed jobs, and many new jobs from the New Deal were physically demanding jobs. The early 1940s had the Second World War. Many women worked in factories and other jobs that were previously open only to men. Rosie the Riveter became an icon for these times. Women were also in the armed services during the war. One of the most notable was the Women Air Force Service Pilots, or WASP, which started as a group of females that had civil pilot license. These women ferried combat planes to various places around the world. Another aspect of the war was that men became scarce in relation to women. I read a book titled Dauntless Helldiver, which was about a dive bomber pilot, where this naval pilot returned home between tours he had six women in the car with him. These women desired male company and attention. He spoke of one of these women giving him her phone number and literally begging him to call her. After the war, most of these women left these jobs for the men that came back, and they became wives. Snagging a husband was more important than the fight for rights, so these women emphasized their femininity. They got married and had kids, and thus bring in the baby boom generation. The 1950s were a period a prosperity for many people in this country. The nuclear family, the organization man, and the housewife were staples of this society. Leave it to the Beaver was a typical portrayal of this society. That was a TV show. This is also the decade of the Brown vs. Board of Education decision by the Supreme Court of the United States that outlawed racial segregation. So the prosperous society was heavily white. It wasn't until the 1960s when women such as Gloria Steinem and Betty Freeman began advocating for more women's rights. The 60s were also a time of the counterculture, protests against the Vietnam War, and the Civil Rights Movement. Some of the goals were equal access to education, with things like Title IX, and in 1976 females were admitted to the service academies. I believe the last school to admit women was VMI, or the Virginia Military Institute. The school did this because it was threatened with the loss of ROTC scholarships if it did not admit women. Now, more women go to college than men. There is no field of study that is denied women. More men are in the STEM fields, but this is due to choice, not by denial of access. So it can be said that in regards of education, that feminists have achieved their goals. Next is employment. For many years, women were denied employment based on their gender, and this is now no longer the case. Next, they fought the glass ceiling. This is where a woman could only rise to a certain level, and then be prohibited from advancing any higher. I want to argue that the glass ceiling is no longer exists. Take a look at this list of female CEOs. These corporations all have female CEOs. Now, some will argue that because Women only make up a small amount of CEOs for large companies that discrimination still exists. Others will argue that these women are just tokens, and thus society still needs feminism. The point is that it is possible for a woman to achieve the top position in corporations, if they are deemed the best qualified for the position. Women also hold powerful political positions in the United States. There are women governors, senators, members of Congress and cabinet positions have been held by women, including the Secretary of State. Even in the military, women can attain high positions. The former Vice Chief of Naval Operations, a four-star admiral, was a woman. Now a four-star general in the Air Force, 
who is a commander of the United States Northern Command, is a female. Females also are captains of cruisers and destroyers in the Navy. So it seemed that feminism has achieved its goals. Women got to vote. They have the same educational opportunities as men and can attain positions of power in employment. So why is feminism still around? I want to talk about a charity to set up the point I want to make. The charity is the March of Dimes. This charity started to fight polio, which was a major health problem. Well, once Dr. Salk invented the polio vaccine, polio was conquered. When I was in the army, an officer told me that once polio was defeated, the leaders of the March of Dimes panicked. They had good jobs. But now no one would donate money to their cause, and thus they would be out of a job. So these leaders decided to change their objective to fight birth defects. Once the objective was changed, they kept their job. Now how does this relate to feminism? Now that these objectives have been achieved, the professional feminist would be out of a job. A professional feminist, the women writers and those in academia, needs to have victims in order for them to have a job. So these people make a lot of stuff up in order to find groups of oppressed people and propose behavioral solutions to others in order to redress these grievances. So what do women mean when they claim to be a feminist? Different feminists cannot agree on what feminism is. Different feminists will claim that feminism is different things. Some will speak of equality between the sexes, while others will seek to combat what is a male-dominated society that is called the patriarchy that perpetually oppresses women. At a recent meeting of feminists where they discuss what it means to be a feminist, one of these feminists made an interesting statement about a woman's right to choose her own path in life. Her name is Anita Sarkeesian. You can Google her if you don't know who she is. Here is part of her statement. Choice feminism posits that each individual woman determines what is empowering for herself, which might sound good on the surface, but this concept risks obscuring the bigger picture and larger fundamental goals of the movement. First off, what are the larger fundamental goals of the movement? In other words, what do feminists want? They have equality in voting, education, and employment, so what other goals does the movement have? I will put a video by Tildeer in the description box where he counters this statement by Anita Sarkeesian. The portion that you have just read is a small, spark, small part of her statement. Here is another part of her statement. The fact of the matter is that some of the choices have ramifications beyond ourselves and reinforces harmful patriarchal ideas about women as a group and about women's bodies in a wider shared culture. What this means is that according to Anita Sarkeesian. In order for a woman to make a good feminist, she needs to make life choices that help women as a group and fight the patriarchy. A woman is not free to choose her life for herself, but must make choices that further the goals of feminism, which in this case is not to reinforce harmful patriarchal ideas about women, whatever that means. Not all feminists agree with this statement. I have a link to a blog post by Angela Knight that questions Anita Sarkeesian. She concludes her post by saying that she does not agree with this brand of feminism. Thus we have two women who describe themselves as feminists but have very different ideas about what feminism means. The point is, gentlemen, when one encounters a woman that identifies as a feminist, one cannot know what she means by this. So how to deal with this when one encounters a woman. First, it is necessary to limit interactions with women and to be very careful about what subjects are discussed. Now, if a man has female friends from childhood that can be trusted, then it is okay to interact with these women on a platonic level, but it's probably not a good idea to discuss feminism. Other interactions must be gauged based on the situation. For the most part, do not argue with women that identify as feminist. It will not do you any good. If at work with a lot of women, keep counsel to yourself and let them talk and you listen. Be busy and keep conversations to a minimum and only on work-related duties. If you are at a university 
Only engage with women in your classes and then only when necessary. Some women will try to get you into a relationship with you and you have to be very careful. If you seek a relationship with the female that identifies as a feminist, keep mentally aware of what I have discussed. When a woman identifies as a feminist, a man does not know what she means because, as I have shown before, feminists disagree amongst themselves. These differences have even caused some young women to reject identifying themselves as a feminist. If a man is in a relationship with a woman that identifies herself as a feminist, he must understand that there will come a time where this woman will question what choice she should make. There will be a fork in the road, so to speak. She may ask herself, is it important to please my man? Or is it important to be a good feminist? If a woman identifies as a feminist, she might make the choice of being a good feminist instead of pleasing you. She might feel that wearing sexy lingerie to please you is oppressive and supports the patriarchy. Such a relationship will not lead to happiness, but to misery. In another link, a young lady questions her right to be pretty and not pursue a high-powered career. She is not questioning any law that forces her to do these things. She is questioning feminism. Now, as a man, you have to navigate this society where many women identify as feminist, but not all are in agreement about what being a feminist means. In many cases, feminism in its current form is a battle for your mind. It does not seek to educate, it seeks to indoctrinate. That is why many feminists cannot tolerate rigorous, reasonable, and rational debate that will question the assumptions, doctrine, and implementation of whatever goals they figure out to pursue. They will speak of male privilege, toxic masculinity, rape culture, and oppression in order to change how men view themselves and their place in the world. Take a look at this cup. If the genders were reversed, there would be an outrage. Some women have been posting pictures of themselves drinking from such mugs. Understand, gentlemen, that these women do not give a damn about you. Their brand of feminism relies on male subjugation, not the uplifting of females to achieve equality. So never let the feminist dogma into your mind. If you like hot women, there's nothing wrong with you. Powerful men never worry about this. You have the right to your preferences. Never forget that. Feminism in its modern form is not about equality among the genders, but an ideology that requires men to change their nature. As a man, you have one thing that women value and you can easily deny them this. What they value is male attention. Take away male attention from a woman and she becomes depressed. Many women view this lack of male attention as the fault of a society ran by an all-powerful patriarchy that determines what society finds aesthetically appealing in a woman. Once they determine this, they seek to change society. They can only make this change if men surrender their thinking to feminism. Withdraw your attention from all women. It is one of the only weapons that you have as a man in a society that does not give a damn about you.